So I had a completely different video plan for today and it's a goodie, so I will release it at some point, but in the early hours of the morning in the UK, Blackmagic Design dropped DaVinci Resolve 18.1 and it is a, a big update. It's, it's really good. So I thought we'd take a second, just based on my quick impressions, which ones are my favorite features and also maybe the ones that you might like as well. So let's run through them. Here are my favorite new features in DaVinci Resolve 18.1. Okay, so for those of you who are new around here, my name is Alex, I'm a certified DaVinci Resolve trainer, and I really enjoy helping people get more out of DaVinci Resolve and certainly get there faster and more efficiently so that they can start editing their videos in you know, any different way that they want. But 18.1 uh, is here, as I've said. So, uh, you know, this is a big update and I'm gonna run through it. I've got a couple of notes here in front of me, so forgive me for that, but uh, there's some really cool updates. And obviously they've got some key features and I'll put those on the screen as well so you can see what they are. And, and you know, again, I think what's interesting is that sometimes you get key features and obviously they're, you know, the ones that Blackmagic Design thinks are key features and I think absolutely some of them are. Uh, but I think also probably some people are looking at that and going, well, you know, okay, that doesn't change my life. It doesn't rock my world, you know, but I actually think that, uh, you know, there's other cool little updates and just tweaks that they've made uh, to the program that actually will make a big difference. And they're just little simple things sometimes. Uh, and so I'm always quite excited when it comes to, you know, a, a new update, but uh, yeah, some good ones. I mean, first of all, I'll just hit the big one, the sort of elephant in the room, if you will, the, the voice isolation and the dialogue leveler. They are really neat, great additions to have. And what I love is that they've built it not into the Fairlight page, but also into the edit page as well. Um, so voice isolation in the inspector, I've tried it. I'm gonna show you a demo in just a sec. You know, they're in really, really important cog and the, you know, the practices just couldn't function without them. It works so well. It really does work incredibly well. So that's a really good one. Uh, I really like the fact that they've updated the speed editor because it's great to have some extra functionality with the speed editor in the edit page, particularly like a silly one for me, but just being able to press the sync bin in the edit page and have it open the source viewer in multicam mode. Awesome. That's a really neat feature and I've needed that a lot this year. So that is going to be a huge one for me, but I'm sure those of you who have bought speed editors will get a massive extra boost out of that extra functionality, which is just really nice to see. Um, one of the other things I really enjoy is the fact that they've added vector keyframing into the Fairlight automations. And that's probably something that a lot of you may never have used, but automations are really a great way of, you know, quickly editing um, your audio tracks in Fairlight and editing sort of levels of all sorts of things, faders and pans and things like that. Uh, and they're really powerful, but they were a little fiddly because you had to sort of draw a kind of a curve and it would move a slider to, and it would draw like a multi-pointed curve, which was fine, but then maneuver, you know, manipulating that and move it around was quite difficult. So uh, vector keyframe just simply means that they can sort of, you can draw, you know, keyframes in the sort of same old way that you could when you're doing any kind of sort of adjustment to maybe the audio levels, for example, uh, but you could do that inside the automations and that was really quite cool as well. So that's a nice added bonus. And actually the way that they've updated some of the automations just in general are really, really nice as well. Um, smaller things, of course, and again, for more of you who are the audio guys and girls out there, that you'll really love those features. Um, I actually like that as well in the Fairlight page that they've got grid support as well now, and you can do that for not just uh, for time code, so like, you know, have it snap every frame or second, but you can also have it set to the tempo, and there's a really great demonstration on the Blackmagic design video that I recommend you go checking out. Mary Plummer's a fantastic trainer, and she does a great job at showing that. Uh, and I think, again, if you're someone who cuts to a beat, um, I know a lot of people who do. I used to do it a lot for certain videos that I would be producing. Um, that's going to be really cool. That's going to be so handy and really help you kind of just dial that in really well and get your music all set up and make those edits um, really crisp. So that's great. Obviously a big one from a Fusion point of view. I saw Patrick Sterling talk about this earlier. He got very excited and I must admit I was quite excited when I did it. I'm not a huge Fusion guy, but Magic Mask in the Fusion page is awesome. That's just going to, you know, be an amazing feature for a lot of people. Um, and I highly recommend you go over and, and see what Patrick's talking about on his channel because he talks a lot about fusion, particularly, and some of the things he was getting excited about. Certainly, are things that I'll get excited about because he's getting excited about it, uh, and he'll show us how to use it really well. So, the fusion page, Magic Mask, a really great opposite, obviously, in addition to that. Uh, and then there's loads of other little refinements as well. I mean. If you're a YouTuber um, and you like, or even just uploading to social media platforms, for example, they've streamlined the way that you can upload to social media platforms now. And also the fact that you can now do, obviously, portrait resolutions, and that's all easily set up with inside the project settings now. So that actually makes it very easy indeed to quickly switch your orientation for your 
essentially your canvas, if you will, and then you can actually just make you know your 16 by 9, or 9 by 16 videos, I should say, um, very easily. So the great thing with that is that they've updated the way that you can upload to social media platforms as well, and that's really powerful because, again, it just makes things a lot easier, a little bit more streamlined. One of the things I've really benefited from recently is being able to put the YouTube uh, channel or chapter update markers in so that you can then do that, then upload to YouTube, and that automatically drops all of those ch chapter update markers in the description for you. And that's a real big time saver, I can tell you. Going through trying to do that normally is really hard and difficult, and just to be able to drop a marker down, tell it that you know all the red markers are going to be YouTube chapter markers, and then up it goes to YouTube and it just drops those in the description. That's super handy. And with this update, we also get the ability to add thumbnails to that as well. So if you've done your thumbnail already, you can drop your thumbnail path into the render box and the delivery page, uh, or the render settings, I should say, and then it will boot that thumbnail up for you as well. That's really cool. And again, a nice little touch. The other beautiful thing is that you can now review your render before it goes and uploads it to the channel as well or any other social media platform. So again, you can just double check that what you're going to see is going to go up to the cloud. Really cool. So that's another kind of nice little feature. And I think really now with the speed editor, the cut page, and all of the sort of quick export options and the way that you can sort of publish now to all these different social media channels, you know, the free version of DaVinci Resolve really is an absolute beast and a, you know, one-stop shop for all of your video editing needs. It really is. Um, yeah, it, it is a little bit of a bigger program and does require a decent sort of program to run it or computer to run it. But actually, I think, you know, that's pretty cool as well. So as I say, there's some great new features in there. And, and coming around to my little refinements, some of the things that I really like, uh, I, simple little things. So um, I really like the fact they fixed, the, or not fixed, but refined the view menu. Um, the, the view menu was quite big and clunky, and there was loads of things in there, and it kind of housed a whole plethora of different things, depending on which page you were in. Obviously, you still went to the view channel, so or the view menu. Uh, one of the things I quite like is that show power bins and show and show smart bins has now actually been moved to the ellipsis on the media pool. So you just click the little three dots and it drops down and out pop the show power bins. It's really easy. It's actually quite quick and neat to get to now compared to having to go find it in the view menu. So I really like that. I really like the light that they've updated the project manager because the project manager uh, before when you wanted to export a bunch of projects you had to do it one by one now you can just literally select them all and export them you can also cut and copy or paste projects between different folders and different project libraries which is again really neat as well and it's equally very quick to do as well which is nice and um, you could also edit and trim gaps as well which is something that you couldn't do before or it, you could but it was a little bit finicky so now it's much easier just to easily use the um, trim start, trim end to playhead. So you can do that now in, on gaps, which is also really nice. And uh, it's also faster overall. They've done, and I'll put them on the screen, they've done a ton of updates and optimizations to make really an incredible amount of speed improvements to the entire platform. But um, you know, particularly Text Plus uh, now is 10 times faster. And there's a whole bunch of others as well. So that's you know, really good indeed. You know, it's all those little things. And I'm sure there's going to be more little things that come out of it all uh, as, we, you know, as we go through and we start to sort of play with it a little bit more. I'm certainly going to be doing a few more videos on all of the different new features. And I'd love to know from you guys what you think are, A, your favorite features, but also B, which ones you'd like to see videos on, perhaps ones that you maybe think need a little bit more explanation. Yeah, other than that, guys, thank you very much for watching. It's been a bit of a ramble, been a bit different this video. Um, so, it, you know, you may hate it. And if that's the case, I'm really sorry. I'm also conscious that uh, I speak quite quickly. So apologies for those of you who are following along. Um, but yeah, I'm quite excited about 18.1. I hope you guys are too. Let me know again in the comments below if you've already downloaded it, what your first thoughts are. I'd really like to know and get sort of an idea from you guys uh, as to, you know, what, a, what you'd like to see, what you're enjoying, and uh, go ahead. And obviously, if you can, hit the like button for me. Let people know that you've enjoyed the video. That would be really smashing. And uh, yeah, hopefully you've subscribed already. But if you haven't, hit the subscription button, and I'll see you guys in the very next video. Bye for now.